How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Yes, Friday here on the show. And we got a lot to talk about here today. And I am flying solo as Mike Sempervivi has been stricken with illness. He's still stricken, and so he's not going to make it here today, but hopefully back on Monday. And uh, I got it handled here today. Because, in fact, we'll be joined in the second segment of the show by Dave Meltzer. Talking all of the news from the newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, available right now at WrestlingObserver.com. So if you want all of the latest news, that's the place to go. 40,000 words of news and information on pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. Tons of stories, including what's going on with the Roman Reigns. That's the top story in the Observer. We'll talk to Dave about all of this here today. And the rest of the news as well. We have an update on Shinjiro Otani. And the news is not good, so we'll tell you about that. Still paralyzed from the neck down. We have an update on Tammy Sitch. Nothing involving Tammy Sitch is ever good, but she is no longer free, which, based on history, is good news. So she will not be driving a car Anytime soon, as she heads to her trial. NXT returning to touring for the first time in two years. We've talked about this a bit. We'll tell you a little bit more about that story. SmackDown lineup for tonight, as well as the New Japan lineup for tomorrow. Capital Collision on Fight TV. And, of course, the Dynamite ratings as well. A lot to get into today. If you want, Texas 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And uh, maybe in the final segment of the show, it's Friday. Maybe we'll take some phone calls. We'll see how it goes. But a lot to get into after the break. Stick around. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Sempervivis recuperating at home. Best wishes to him and his family on his illness. But uh, he should be back on uh, on Monday. He's been texting me incessantly today. This sickness sucks. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. We've been talking about it for... For me, it's been weeks now. But uh, away we go with the news. Shinjiro Otani has issued his first statements in suffering a cervical spinal cord injury last month. 49-year-old was injured in the main event of a 0-1 event April 10th. After taking a German suplex into the corner, remained motionless after taking the move. Has not regained use of his arms or legs. Surgery was performed to prevent further deterioration of the injury on April 13th. It is uh, it is May 13th today. It's been a month. Zero One posted a statement from Otani on Friday. Also confirmed he is still paralyzed from the neck down. A translation of his statement reads, To all the hot professional wrestling fans who love professional wrestling, and to all the people involved in the professional wrestling industry, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience and concern caused by my injury. Also, I am grateful to everyone for their warm feelings. Now I am working hard every day for treatment and rehabilitation so that I can return to everyone as soon as possible. I will definitely return in front of you. We look forward to your continued support of Zero One and professional wrestling. I don't think he needs to apologize for being an inconvenience to anyone as a result of his injury. A benefit show will be held June 4th at the Oda Ward General Gymnasium in Tokyo. Yuji Nagata, Tomoaki Honma, Togi Makabe from New Japan are scheduled to take part. Pro Wrestling Noah will also be sending wrestlers to the show, so... All the best to Shinjiro Otani. I hope that I hope that he can make a recovery. But it's been a month and still paralyzed from the neck down. So he needs all the good wishes and thoughts that he can get because that's a that's a rough injury and uh, it is quite frankly not a great update. So all the best to him and his family. Sonny back in jail. We talked about this story. Uh, they. Uh, they allowed her out on bond, $250,000 million, uh, $250, bond, quarter of a million dollars. And, of course, everybody was outraged about that because, uh, you know, she's been uh, prohibited from driving and she just continues to drive. And they got her toxicology report back 
and her blood alcohol content was over three times the legal limit when she was involved in this uh, most recent accident, which led to the death of a 75-year-old man. So the state argued that there is a substantial probability that Sitch committed DUI manslaughter in a March 25th crash that killed a 75-year-old man, and that Sitch posed a threat of harm to the community due to her long history of DUI offenses. A judge made the decision to revoke her bond, granting the state of Florida's request for pre-trial detention. The judge ruled there was no reasonable way to keep the public safe from Sitch other than complete bond revocation. She was arrested May 6th after her toxicology results came back. Blood alcohol level, 0.08 is the limit. She was at 0.280. That's over three times, three and a half times. She has posted the, uh, she had posted $227,500 bond. And uh, that has since been revoked. So, of course, March 25th was the accident and... uh, Driver of the vehicle who failed to stop, Tamara Lynn Sitch, and uh, Julian Lasseter, 75 year old, uh, 75 years old, was killed in the crash. So she will be in jail until uh, I can't say this is resolved, but she will be in uh, jail as she awaits trial. So that's the update on Tammy Sitch. We're talking about NXT. And uh, these, this, this brand needs to go on the road because uh, these wrestlers are uh, not learning how to work. Right now, the wrestlers are learning how to choreograph matches for a live television show. And then uh, they choreograph matches for the next live television show. And uh, if you watch the show and sometimes you think like, you know, quite frankly, you know, that person's had nine matches. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, by the way. You know, that person's had nine matches. Well, that wasn't so bad. You know, some would even argue, well, just let them, you know, just do this every week. Well, the problem is they get called up to the main roster eventually, some of them, and uh, you ain't going to get a week to practice your match. Uh, you may think you have a week. You may have a match a match announced for the following week, but, uh, you know, then the old guy shows up on Monday and uh, changes your match, and then everything you worked on, it's out the window. So you got to be able to, you got to be able to work at least to a degree. So uh, they need to go on the road, and uh, they will be returning to touring for the first time in over two years. Post-wrestling is confirmed. NXT will return to the road with house shows in Florida in June. So we talked about this on Observer Radio, and, uh, you know, the feeling then was that it's probably going to be what they used to call the coconut loop and uh, just small shows and tiny buildings around Florida because, you know, when NXT was NXT 1.0, and they had some of the best wrestlers in the world having great matches and, you know, what what to the audience would be considered big stars. I mean, they did tour and they didn't do all that well outside of if you ran like a takeover. But, you know, they came to Seattle and normally in Seattle, these these WWE shows are in these giant buildings. And for NXT, they ran the local uh, Paramount Theater and it was a cool theater. And there was, you know, there were people there and they were hot. But uh, this was not a 5,000-seat building. This was not a 10,000-seat building. So the reality is they're not going to draw on the road at all with this NXT 2.0 crew. It's just not going to happen. So they will be doing these small buildings, and uh, that will be July of 2021. Dave reported in the newsletter last June uh, that they would be going on the road. And uh, it's been almost a year they didn't go on the road. Now we got to go back on the road again. And uh, it will be, as noted, the uh, Coconut Loop and small buildings. We've had a couple people here on the chat saying that their local uh, building was on the Coconut Loop. And, you know, if you want to make fun of NXT being on national television and uh, being able to sell like 200 tickets to a show... I mean, you can if you want to, but, bro, I don't care. If there's 25 people in the building and these uh, wrestlers need to go and work in front of 25 people and learn how to do matches, uh, great. I'm all for it. And quite frankly, what they should do is uh, it should be a requirement that if you're on this little loop, 
you got to work a different person every night, and uh, you don't just get to work that same match over and over and over again. I know that if you go to a WWE house show back in the day, I mean, everybody just worked the same match over and over again. But you did have more freedom on house shows. And uh, for developmental, it's even more important to not work the same match every night. I don't, I, I just feel that like if these wrestlers are going to get any better, they should be on this coconut loop with uh, the green people, with the more advanced people, the advanced people trying to teach them how to work, have a finish, call it in the ring. You just got to learn. The matches may be horrible. You may only draw 25 people, but uh, that's the way that this has to be done. So we'll see what they end up doing on these Coconut Loop shows, but I think that's the way that needs to be done. SmackDown is tonight. Are you ready for SmackDown? Well, we've got RK Bro confronting the Bloodline. This, of course, is over unifying the tag team titles, which they teased for a month and then did not deliver. Now they're teasing it again. And uh, internally, the idea is, well, you're going to get the match, but we ain't going to unify these titles. So I don't even know what the point of doing the match is if you're not going to unify the titles as advertised. But, you know, plans do change. Maybe they will unify the titles and then uh, ununify them shortly thereafter. But we've got uh, Sasha and Naomi defending the women's tag titles against Natty and Shayna Baszler. I'm not telling you it's going to be a title change, but I don't think a title change is out of the question. And uh, Kofi Kingston will face Butch, who has returned from his hiatus. Back in a moment with Dave Meltzer, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Dave Meltzer joining us here today. Newest edition of The Observer is available at WrestlingObserver.com. All of the biggest stories from the week. And uh, Dave, you're typing furiously during the break. What's going on right now? Nah, nothing, nothing of major. Just, just catching up on things. Well, the uh, top story in the Observer is about uh, Roman Reigns, and we've been talking about this story on Observer Radio, also at WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, he's going to be working a more limited schedule, and uh, there's a lot of details in the new issue. But uh, I couldn't help but note that, like, the number of pay-per-view shows that uh, that he's going to be doing this year, you know, you had written. What we're talking, maybe six or something six, of that nature. Uh, six to eight. Yeah. Um, there is a number that they've agreed to, but I don't know what the exact number is. But I think six to eight, somewhere in that range. I brought up seven, and they said close. <laughs> I guess that's why I say six to eight. <laughs> so, so okay. So he's working six to eight pay per view shows. You mentioned that he would do some SmackDown shows to build up the pay per view shows. Yes, and he'll, he'll do he'll do TV he'll do TVs in conjunction with the pay per views, like what Lesnar and Goldberg do. Yeah, and occasionally he'll he'll show up on Raw. Probably, yes. okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got he's got dates. Um, they and they'll start being announced soon, I presume. Um, you know, he was pulled from all advertising for everything except for uh, Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, but um, he will be advertised probably relatively soon for the dates that he will be appearing on the shows. But he's going to be doing a lot of matches. You know, I think on TV, he's, I'm going to guess he's, I don't know that he's going to be a complete Lesnar and Goldberg where you never do a match on TV, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's close to that. And, and of late, if you notice on SmackDown, he rarely was doing matches on television. So I got no problem with a guy that uh, has earned the right to essentially have a schedule like this good for him okay yep good for him but i mean the obvious question is why is he the world champion what not just that but it's like the same the same the same the same reason why lesnar was but but lesnar and, Go had, and, Go and goldberg too for they they had a title and there was another title on the other show like yeah. to me the whole point of unifying a title is that you have a champion that can then appear on both shows and prop up both shows but as as dual champion, he's largely still a SmackDown wrestler. He's making rare appearances on Raw. He's not going to be doing any house shows. He's not even going to be doing all of the pay-per-views. And, you know, people would talk about how Lesnar hijacked the title. Well, that's all fine and good if you have another champion. But they don't. So yep. we've unified the I... titles to put it on a guy who's barely going to be there <laughs> and not going to even be on the other show. It would make sense to have a championship on somebody else. Especially since Reigns doesn't really need it, um, at least until WrestleMania. I think that, like, you know, to put the title on somebody else through, like, October, November 
And then if the idea is if you're going to do Rock and, Rome, and um, Roman Reigns and you want that to be a championship match, get the title back on Roman Reigns, you know, towards the end of the year, maybe at the Rumble or whatever, that makes perfect sense. To have it on him now when you have all these pay-per-views, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that it needs to be on him, but that's the decision they made. And then, of course, we've got SmackDown tonight, and uh, they are teasing the unification of the tag team titles, which yep. uh, you also reported. They, they have plans to deliver the match, but not the stip. <laughs> well, they may deliver the stip, what? but, that, but that, was the, that was the idea a week ago, was that uh, they weren't planning on unifying the titles, but they are going to do the, the unification match, I'm going to guess, in Chicago. On the pay per view, you know, come the day, you know, come the week of the show or whatever, they may end up unifying the tag titles. I don't know that they won't, but you know, the idea that was discussed was it's probably not. A, it's probably a good idea to have two sets of champions for the two different shows. So <laughs> they, they, they may, made they that may... decision about the tag team champions, but not the actual world champion. Yeah, well, I mean, I can see the argument of having one world champion. Um, I can almost see the argument of one tag champion, but I would disagree with it at this stage. Um, just because the tag title doesn't mean that much, and it's better to have two of them. You know, one for each brand, so there's all the tag teams can... It's It puts more tag teams in a position to be relevant. Um, I can, uh, you know, the one world title is the, with the idea that you've got... You know, like in, in, you know, the king, the real king, and you go after the real king. Now, of course, I would want the world title on someone that's there all the time but you know i mean again it's you know you can certainly make the argument in in the nwa era that uh you know the world champion was made special because you only saw him you know once every month or two rather than um every week and and you know he might be in your city you know six times a year you know or or, or something like that you know back in the days when like they did monthly shows or in some cities weekly shows so there is an argument and a precedent that that keeping it you know, the championship match is sparing in your local market meant that it meant more and gave it more prestige. But none of that's, I don't think that's any of that's really relevant to today. So the other uh, big story is what's going on with Kota Bushi. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this story the other day and I kind of thought, like, if you don't like it, you know, I guess you could just quit. But, uh, I mean, clear, well, I think he clearly wants, I he think doesn't he, want to quit. He wants to get fired. That's what's going on here. He clearly right, right, right. wants he's trying to get, to get fired. Out, he's, he's trying to get out of his contract so he can wrestle somewhere else. He but, doesn't want to give up wrestling, but he's um, very unhappy with New Japan. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's the basic situation. So he's, uh, I mean, he's published uh, text messages. I mean, there's... He's he's uh, he's burned a bridge here. It appears he's, he's attempting to burn a bridge. Yes, yeah. and yeah. Uh, he had signed what they had described as a lifetime contract. Well, it wasn't really. Which I don't even know what that even means. It wasn't lifetime. Signed to a hundred year contract, a twenty year no. contract. No, I think he's under contract until the end of this year. Actually, so he actually could have sat it out, and maybe that'll be what happens. You know, and he's you know again he's got to get his shoulder back. You know, I mean he's still he's, he doesn't want to wrestle until his shoulder is close to ready, and it's. You know, his, stro- his shoulder is very weak. So, um, you know, there's, you know, and I think they probably want him to wrestle or would hope for him to wrestle. They wanted him, obviously, they wanted him back for the New Japan Cup. So why why was it announced that he'd signed a lifetime contract if it was actually three years? Uh, I, I don't know. Or what it's do we pro- know about the status it's, of this contract? It's, it's, pro, it's pro wrestling. There's a lot of things said about contracts that may not be 100% accurate, um, especially more now than ever before, I think. I mean, they could at least just say a long-term contract. They specifically said lifetime. They did He's say lifetime. lifetime. They, they, did say li- they did say lifetime. What did There's you do not- that for? I don't know. There's no. I mean, who has a life? Even The Undertaker, I don't think, has a lifetime contract. Although I think it's like a 15-year contract, which is, which you know, is a lot of his life left. Yeah, a good percentage of it probably. So then obviously the question, I mean, I, I've always been under the impression that uh, Kota Bushi's family, like they have a lot of money. And yeah. so this is not like his, his uh, he'd be okay if he didn't wrestle again. He'd be okay. But, so but, I guess but the I'm question sure, is, sure. where do you want to wrestle at? If you don't want to move to the U.S., but, I mean, yeah, he's going to do indies around Japan, DDT. What, what's he going to do? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't even know if he knows what, he, what, what he's going to do. Um, I think he's just, I think he's just frustrated. You know, I think it's a combination of 
whatever it is, you know, I think he feels disrespected by New Japan. And also, you know, you got to remember that these guys, you know, that the Kota Ibushi level, there's, there's, when you get to be that good, there's, there's something that's, you have certain drive and thing that, that most people can't really fully understand and that, that, that makes you that good. And so he's got that. And then when you're injured and can't perform, it does a double whammy on you. And so he's, he's in that state where, you know, it's like, and, and, and even worse for him, it's not just the wrestling, but you don't look like Kota Ibushi unless you've got like this training whammy too. So he's got the wrestling whammy and the training whammy and he can't do either. So he's probably depressed as all hell. And I think that that's part of what's going down here is that he's probably severely unhappy because he can't lift weights and train like he wants to. He can't wrestle, which is his outlet. And he feels disrespected by the company that, you know, he worked with when he got hurt and maybe, you know, blames the, their pressure for him coming back early from the pneumonia. And maybe that had a part in him getting hurt you know, in the G1 when he wasn't, when he wasn't nearly a hundred percent and he was, and he did that grueling G1 tournament. Well, what I do like about this, whatever he's doing is that uh, we do actually finally have somebody taking a stand against this culture in Japan of, Hey, if you're hurt, you just work unless you're like badly hurt. And then so we'd always heard that. Like if someone missed a show, something must be really bad, really bad. that yeah. They missed a show. And it's actually ridiculous. It's like, if you're hurt, you shouldn't be working a show. Man. And and it's a culture that probably would be much better off if we had more people like Abushi who was like, I'm not coming back if my shoulder's destroyed. Yeah. Look, I saw people who were literally on crutches backstage after surgery, go in the ring and attempt to wrestle and wrestle very poorly because of it, because of the mentality that you don't misadvertise dates there yet. I mean, that's in another era, but not that, you know, much of another era. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen some stuff in Japan that is, uh, I mean, I've seen it in the United States too, but it, but it probably is more severe in Japan than, than the United States as far as the mentality that you don't miss matches due to injuries unless you're like completely incapacitated. Yeah. I mean, quite frankly, the the rule that they have where if you're advertised for a title match and you can't make the title match, you're stripped of the title. It seems kind of a little bit severe, but hey, if you advertise a match but and a person but, 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 can't but, but, be there, I mean, but that, but that's that, but fine. That's, but that's but that's the same in UFC too. Sure, but I mean that that's all fine and good. But if you're a low, if you're a, a, a she or whatever, you've got no title and you're hurt. I mean, you should be able to not wrestle until you're not hurt. I mean, it's I mean, a lot, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you do have the ability to do so. Um, they're always going to, and that's that's you know, again, like how many times have you heard in the United States the same thing where where somebody has had like say knee surgery and they say you need to be out for eight months and four months later the promotion calls them up, we need you back, we need you back. I mean, I've heard that my whole life in, in American pro wrestling yep, it's too. Industry wide. Well, listen, we it's have to do. Yeah, we have to do a break. Thanks, Dave. I'll plug the Observer after the break. Everybody, back in a moment. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Ah, one thing after another. Back here in the show, and uh, there we go. Mike Sempervivi not joining us here today, so it's just me. And you. And hey, look, I figured out this this autofocus thing again. Sorry it was blurry for a while here, but every now and then this, you know, this camera's got a life of its own. So anyway, we fixed it. And now I'm bright and clear. Hey, if you want to uh, join the show, here's how we do it. 425-780-7566 is the phone number to text. 425-780-7566. If you want to call, yes, the phone line's are open and the phone number 844-913-2727 844-913-2727 i was watching sonic the hedgehog with my daughter the other day and there's a scene where like i've never actually watched the first movie i'm just in the room when it's on but there's something that happens with like a power surge and all the power goes out in the uh city or whatever and then they they cut to uh they cut to a scene in the police department or whatever, and the phones are ringing. And uh, and Paisley goes, what's that noise? I said, what are you talking about? She was talking about the phone ringing because she doesn't know what a phone is. So uh, 
for those of you that know what a phone is, if you have a phone and you want to call, uh, that 844-913-2727 number is what us old folks know as a toll-free number. You don't pay a toll to call that number if you're on a landline. I realize all this going over a lot of your heads. But if you have a landline, that phone number is toll-free. You don't have to pay the toll. For the other 80% of you listening that are young, just call the number. Wait on hold, and then tell me what's on your mind. And I'll get to the text messages as well. Capital Collision is tomorrow for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yes, it will be available on Fight TV. Yes, the last show, Windy City Wright, was a disaster. Yes, New Japan has promised significant improvements. Guys, remember back in the day before there was like a WWE network and Ring of Honor had that streaming service and some other companies always try to stream, and every single time it was like an absolute disaster, and there'd be buffering or you couldn't get in or the quality was horrible or it would die, and every time they were like, next time we're going to get it, next time. Well, luckily it's now, uh, it's now 2022, and man, I'm streaming. Beautiful HD. It's working right now. So uh, they promise significant improvements for this coming Saturday's uh, pay-per-view. Hiroshi Tanahashi defends the IWGP United States title against John Moxley, Will Ospreay, and Juice Robinson in a four-way. That's for the U.S. title. Okada and Trent Beretta face Jay White and Hikaleo. Tomohiro Ishii faces Eddie Kingston in a mean guy match. Brody King and Minoru Suzuki in another Mean Guy match. We have Jeff Cobb, Aaron Hanare, Mark Davis, and Kyle Fletcher against Jonah, Mikey Nichols, Shane Haste, and Bad Dude Tito. Great O'Conn versus Chase Owens. Fred Rosser, David Finley, Tangaloa, Rocky Romero, and Yuya Uemura against our own Filthy Tom Lawler, J.R. Kratos, Royce Isaacs, Jarrell Nelson and Danny Limelight. Ren Narita versus Carl Fredericks. And Kevin Knight versus the DKC. If you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com, don't miss out. You on Monday can enjoy the next episode of Filthy Four Daily, where we find out if my cocky friend Tom made it through the weekend. Because this Sunday is his birthday. And I believe this Sunday is the day that he once again puts his New Japan Strong Openweight title on the line against Fred Rosser. Fred Rosser, who has lost twice, twice to Filthy Tom Lawler. Twice. Both times, by the way. Voted match of the year for New Japan Strong. And they're going to do it one more time on Tom's birthday. Does he have what it takes to do this one more time? We're going to have a special show Monday, one way or the other. Either a celebration or a memorial to Tom's reign as Strong Openweight Champion. Got a lot of people on the line, so let's uh, let's do this. Portsmouth, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, what's up? This is uh, Brandon here in Portsmouth. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I can't wait for Monday. Uh, that's going to be a great uh, uh, podcast there with Tom. Now, um, I understand if they do Rock versus Roman, um, if they do that match, that the title being on the line, that would be the marquee match. But I feel like if the title's on the line, I don't believe there's any chance The Rock wins that match. But if the title isn't on the line, because maybe Roman has lost the title for whatever reason, and it's Rock versus Roman for, like, who's really the head of the table, Roman may end up still winning, but I still would be like, well, there might be a chance, and maybe The Rock wins that match. So, I don't know. It kind of seems like it would make better sense to not have the title on the line at Mania, coming from that perspective. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. I mean, from my perspective, I mean, there ain't nothing they can do that makes me think that Rock is going to win that match. I mean, 
I guess maybe if it were like, you know, Roman Reigns is going to retire and it's his last match ever. And uh, in that case, I, you know, probably wouldn't matter if you, you put over The Rock. But, I mean, if Roman is not retiring, I just cannot see him losing to The Rock under any circumstance. Rock is there to put over Roman Reigns. And, uh, and it is funny because there, this Roman Reigns push and, uh, you know, beating Brock, unifying the titles, never getting beaten. I mean, the idea here really is supposed to be to build up Roman Reigns as the absolute unbeatable greatest champion of all time, which in theory also makes the title that he holds the most prestigious, valuable title anywhere in all of pro wrestling. But uh, it does not feel that way to me. I mean, it probably does to the WWE audience and everything like that, because I'm sure they think somebody deserves that belt. But, uh, you know, I don't think that if you do the Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania in Los Angeles, you don't need that title on the line. I, I think it's it's... It doesn't. You don't need it. Like, try to create a you know a new superstar with that title in another match. Roman's already uh, top of the food chain, so I don't know. It's uh, I don't think you need the title for that match one way or the other. And I don't think title or no title. I think that uh, that Rock's winning one way or the other. But you know, trying to predict the winner of a WWE match is a exercise in folly. Austin, Texas, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Brian. Shout out to the Twitch homies. Um, I, Frankie Kazarian's going to be at the Impact tapings this weekend, and I'm wondering if this is just a one off to reciprocate for Deanna Prazo and W. Morrissey being on Dynamite, or if this is like the beginning of a, a main, like, you know, talent exchange thing that they're going to be doing again, like long term. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. I, I don't know. I never I never asked. My guess would be probably uh, more similar to what you said first, the one-time exchange, because it doesn't appear that we're, we're in that... Uh, a while ago, it was like, you know, people were going back and forth, storylines back and forth, but now it just appears, you know, their, their uh, impact and AW are on the same page, and if AW wants to bar someone, they can ask and probably get that person. And then they'll exchange somebody, and Frankie Kazarian can go and do a job for somebody or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I would presume that's what it is, but I can I can try to find out. But uh, I, I haven't seen much of an indication that people are going to be sent over for longer periods of time, but, but perhaps they will be. All right, let's go to... Uh, no, Ryan. Ryan, you're banned. No, you're banned. I know you're listening right now. You have been banned from the show. So it's like Kota Bushi's contract. Like, you've got to take a break. You and your brother are both banned. All right. Let's go to Chatsworth. I think that's correct. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Brian. What's up? Not much. What's happening? I just have one question for you. Uh, what one wrestler do you really want to see go through Saray's magic white smoke? Oh, man. I thought this was going to be a trolling question, but this one's right up my alley. Well, honestly, I mean, who's going to top Bodie Hayward going through and becoming a cheerleader? I mean, uh, actually, I can think of a few wrestlers that I would like to go through her transformation tunnel. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they've both been fired. I would have liked to have seen Harlan go through that tunnel and uh, come out in some silly costume and have to do something wacky. That would have been fun. I would have liked to have seen Dexter Loomis go through that tunnel. He actually would have been, he might have been better than Bodie Hayward going through that tunnel. If 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 Dexter Loomis had gone through the tunnel and come out the other side dressed as like, uh, you know, Indy Hartwell, I think that would have been fantastic. But uh, I got some suggestions here. Nah, Tony D'Angelo, I don't think it'd be as funny. Orange Cassidy, nah. Joe Gacy, uh uh. No. I wanna see so I wanna see somebody you have to have somebody that has like the uh the stoic gimmick. And and then they come through and they have to be like completely, totally different. That's that's what I think is uh not Omos, no, he already tries to have a no, not Alistair Black. 
Honestly, I think that my 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 uh, my my two were the best two: Harland and uh, and the creep from the Creep Farm, Dexter Loomis. Minoru Suzuki actually he would do a great job. He would do a great job coming through that that tunnel. It actually would be great if Ezekiel showed up and he went through the tunnel and he became Elias. That would have been fantastic. But that's a pre-tape you can't do because we would have heard about it by now. I think that those are the... uh... So you guys hate NXT 2.0, but you know you're thinking about it. Gunter, I actually would love to see Volter come through the tunnel. He'd be a good one. He'd be a great one. Or, yeah, just like everybody that has a worse gimmick on the main roster, they could go through the tunnel and be their old great gimmick again. Like Sami Zayn, he's all annoying, and he goes through the tunnel, and he comes back as a babyface Sami Zayn from, like, 2016. That'd be great. And, uh, yeah. All right, who else do we have? Oh, nobody else on the line. Let's go to text messages. Actually, first we should mention Dynamite on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, It was up 0.8%. In uh, viewers, 840,000 viewers, 18 to 49, they did a 0.33. They were fifth on the cable charts. Uh, They had, uh, of course, NBA competition, but also the season premiere of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Eh, They uh, also did a 0.33, but had slightly more viewers in the demo. So uh, that would mean that... uh, you know, usually the season premiere is kind of the the peak, unless it like really catches on. So I would guess that uh, they probably won't be defeated by the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills going forward. But you never know. And uh, those are the numbers. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, back here in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Sempervivi, but uh, uh, Little Lord Fauntleroy here has been uh, begging me during the break to help co-host. He says he has something very, very important to say. So. Since it's a short segment, I'm going to let him say his piece. So, floor is yours, Fauntleray. Go for it. Hey, Ryan in Cumberland. You're fired. Lol, 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 ha ha, you geek. Get out of here, you absolute geek. You're the geekiest geek that ever geeked. Right. I haven't seen a geek like you since the last time I went to an F4W convention. Hey, 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 you little idiot. God, I, you, you give him a... What's the old saying? You give him a... Inch and he takes a mile. I should have known that was a mistake. But he did mention the F4W convention. And uh, if you are interested in going to our convention, which is in Vegas, all out weekend, end of the month. Hey, we got some tickets available to a couple of things. I'm not even sure what's left. The uh, combo ticket package with a an AEW ticket and a Q&A ticket is gone. So uh, you can't get that one. But uh, I think we still have a couple of Q&A tickets left. General admission only. Uh, that Saturday, if you want to go to our uh, our uh, Q&A, Dave and I at the Silver Nugget Casino, they're always fun. You get to stand up and talk into the mic and ask a question, and then, you know, we answer it. That's uh, Saturday, and uh, you can grab that. Ed in San Antonio's got a show. We got a group dinner. Texas Day, Brazil. 5 p.m. sharp, I'll be there. Vinny, I think Dave's going to that one. I'm going for sure. I don't care about everyone else. I'm going to eat some all-you-can-eat steak at the Texas Day Brazil. So if you want uh, to attend any of these with us, f4wvegas.brownpapertickets.com or f4wonline.com slash Vegas. I want to thank Mike as always, callers and listeners over the studio, all of my top-tier YouTube subscribers, Twitch homies. We'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Wrestling Observer Live.